Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. Today, we'll be taking a look at a very different type of vehicle. One that's only been done a few times in the G.I. Joe line, namely a mech suit. So meet the G.I. Joe Defense Mech. This, um, vehicle, robot, mech was released in 2004 in the Valor vs. Venom line with all original parts. And this thing is certainly off the beaten path when it comes to G.I. Joe vehicles, but it looks freaking awesome! It looks like what you'd expect a futuristic military mech suit to look like. It has incredible detailing, which, to be fair, is something that I'd expect from a 2004 toy. But still, where to even begin? There's panels on the back, hoses, all sorts of tech stuff on the arms, and lots of molded details on the inner parts that you wouldn't even see if a figure was in there. The canopy looks great too. Now let's talk about the moving parts. The legs can move at the thighs and knees, but only at very limited angles. On an action figure, even a robot figure, this would bother me, but since this is a mech suit, it is supposed to be cumbersome and not super movable. The arms move at the shoulders, but use that click into another position articulation, which always worries me since it can get loose over time. The shoulders are also kinda ball jointed, so they have a slight bit of movement there. Only the left arm has elbow articulation, as the right one houses a light up and sound feature that I can't really show you because the battery died long ago, and it's too much of a pain to find a replacement for it. The left arm does have another neat feature. On the back of the lower legs and the front of the right arm, there are non-functional pneumatic pistons. But the one on the left arm does actually have moving parts, which is a great touch. I don't even mind it as a working missile launcher, since even that looks pretty damn cool. Lastly, the two antennas can move 180 degrees. They look a little fragile, which makes me glad I bought this new as an adult collector back when it first came out especially combined with my worries about the arms loosening. And now we have to look at it with a figure inside. The toy came with a version of Leatherneck, but we won't be getting into that figure here. It looks good when it's being piloted, but I do have a few nitpicks. The figure is clamped in there, which is good since it means it fits in tightly, but if you lower the chin guards, you notice the guy is just hanging there. That... that can be comfortable. Also, his legs and arms are totally exposed to enemy fire. Eh, still better than what Cross Country got, though. I love running gags! A good additional feature are the handles on the arms that the figure can actually grab quite comfortably, adding to the play value. On another topic, this thing has stickers, but they came pre-applied. I only bring this up because one of them is the nuclear symbol. Something that would worry me a little if I had to pilot a thing. And that was the only toy the defense mech ever got. Parts of it were reused or retooled to make a few other mechs, but that's all. Overall, it's a fun little vehicle that looks really cool. I'd recommend it. It may seem a bit out there for G.I. Joe, but it's not like it hasn't been done before. Arguably, the snake armor would be the first time they tried this, and later again with the power fighters, and even the armor bot. But where, oh where, could the inspiration for this thing have come from? I simply don't have a clue. Get away from her, you bitch! Yes, of course, Alien started this off. Hell, the Litterneck figure even looks a bit like a colonial marine. Though, to be honest, the first thing I thought of was the mech suit from Avatar. But that movie didn't come out until five years after this toy was released. Now, let's talk about the only thing that brings this toy down. The name. Defense Mech. Really? G.I. Joe has had hundreds of cool names and acronyms, and yes, quite a few stinkers too, but this is what they went with here? Just... Defense Mech? That's just a description! Where's the originality? Since Leatherneck pilots it, might call it the Leather's Wrecker. Sure, that's a pretty dumb name, but at least it's something. The back of the box gives us a little information about the machine. It's advanced battle technology that enhances the powerful combination of man and machine. It has an enhanced kinetic response system. So it makes you stronger, I guess? Though without fists, since both arms are weapons, the only thing that's good for is kicking the enemy. Finally, it was designed to combat Cobra's biomechanical vehicles and troops that are infused with animal DNA, because that was a thing with Valor vs. Venom. 
I couldn't really find anything about this thing showing up in other media, so there's nothing to say there. If any of you know if this thing showed up anywhere, do let me know in the comments below. And that was the defense mech. It's a really cool vehicle, or weapon I guess, and it looks awesome. Once again, a toy that gets a big recommendation from me. Well, I'll see you next time everybody, and hey, why not like, share and subscribe if that's your thing. Okay, to be honest, I was too lazy to put away the Havoc and Cross Country from last week, so you get the gag again. What? Oh, you wanted me to talk about this thing! And uh, maybe later.